let the interview begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Flipper Nerds podcast. And I'm here with Derek Wayne Johnson. Hi, Derek. Thanks for being here. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm very glad you could be on the show today. So I know you're a director, screenwriter, and producer. So what made you choose that um, path? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh, it kind of goes back to my love of movies since I was a little kid. I remember, you know, I grew up watching v- VHS tapes and cable TV and yeah, uh, really absorbing movies. But going to the cinema really changed my life. I, was, I remember when I was three years old. I saw the Karate Kid Part Two in the theater, oh, and wow. I was just just mesmerized. And uh, I don't know, I just had this. I just knew early on that I wanted to make movies, and um, it just kind of evolved over time. And um, I started making short films in high school. So, and here we are today. Nice, that's awesome. So, did you ever think at one point that you wanted to be an actor, or was it always directing you wanted to do? I originally was also an actor. I wanted to be both a director and an actor. And okay. then I realized acting was more therapy and also just a way to get my foot in the door. So I quit acting probably 10 years ago or so, but um, I always knew I was a filmmaker. I was a storyteller yeah, more than an that. actor. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And obviously from your work, I gather you're a huge Rocky and Karate Kid fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are my two favorite films of all time. Okay. Uh, directed by my my uh, late friend, John G. Abelson, who was my mentor and uh, my kind of my cinematic influence, if you will. So it's kind of neat how this one guy directed two of my favorite movies. Yeah. Nice. And obviously you worked on uh, is it the 40 Years of Rocky documentary in 2020. So what was it like making that? Oh, that was great. Uh, Sylvester, it was his idea. And he, okay. uh, he, he asked me to do it after we screened the John G. Avildsen documentary at Sly's house. Oh, Sly right. kind of leaned in and was like, I have another idea for you. And wow. I want you to do this for me. And what's interesting is that was in 2016, but the movie didn't come out until 2020, but we just didn't change the title. So it's really, it was the 44th year of rocky but you know whatever. oh okay nice so have you got a close relationship with sly yeah yeah absolutely he's another friend and mentor so we've wow. done four documentaries together so far wow that's amazing and what made you choose out of everything to focus on these two films i know you've obviously done more work but why these two in particular and not other films i think that i needed to get that out of my system so to speak, but also I wanted to highlight, it started with me wanting to highlight John Avildsen. Yeah. Because, you know, we all know Steven Spielberg, we all know Martin Scorsese, but here's a guy that's kind of in the shadows, even though he won an Oscar for Rocky. Yeah. Who's making these amazing underdog films and not getting a lot of praise for it. So I wanted to push him up to the forefront. And then from there, a friendship with with Sly evolved and, and so on. So it, I kind of got involved heavily with Rocky and the Karate Kid in that way. And uh, here we are, you know, four documentaries later, I believe it is. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Could you have ever envisioned doing this down the line? Obviously, because obviously you've been doing this a while now. So from where you started, you feel you've come a very long way to where you are now. Absolutely. I mean, I I pinch myself daily uh, because, you know, I'm just this small town country boy from east texas yeah and um with dreams and ambition and these heroes and all these things that i loved growing up and then you know going to los angeles i got to actually like kind of execute all of that and it's led to a pretty cool career so i'm very thankful and i look back on the dreams i had as a kid and now i'm able to live them not necessarily at the level I want to yet, but yeah, of course, yeah. I just feel like it's, you know, it's a ladder that I'm steadily climbing. So I'm very thankful. Nice. That's awesome. And what would you say is probably some of your personal or biggest accomplishments you've achieved so far in your career? Oh man. Um, well, 
I mean, clearly, you know, getting to work with my heroes yeah, and yeah, getting yeah. mentored by them, that I, I have to go with that because the knowledge that they've passed down on me and the experiences I've had working with all these people is just, it's invaluable. So I'm very proud of that. Nice. And what else would you like to do other than directing? Have you done much writing of your own that you'd like to do maybe down the line? Yeah, yeah. I uh, By trade, I'm a director and I also produce, write and edit. When it comes to writing, um, I've recently teamed up with my, my co-writer, Frank, Frank Mangarelli. He's out of Chicago. And we just uh, wrote an, our latest feature film called Bloodstreams. Oh, nice. And it's... Uh, so it kind of was great. It got me back into writing because I've written scripts and I, most of what I direct, I write. Uh, done some feature films in the past and then I got into the documentary game. Bloodstreams was a way for me to, to get back to writing and, 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 and get back to doing narrative feature films. So we're actually, we have a lot of uh, scripts that we're dusting off and polishing that we want to do later and also creating new things. So for me as a writer, it's more a way for me to be able to direct the stories that I want to tell. Yeah, I totally get that because you always want to write the stories you want to envision on the big screen, I suppose. So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so now you've done obviously Rocky and Karate Kid. Is there any other films you'd like to do documentaries on down the line? Ooh, man. Um, probably. I mean, I, I've, I kind of. I thought the documentary thing for me was going to be just a one-off. I thought I was just going to do John G. Alvin's and King and the Underdogs and then get back to features. Okay. And then Sly wanted to do the Rocky thing. And then I did a movie on his brother and just all this sort of stuff. So I kind of got, I think, like I said earlier, kind of a lot of that out of my system. Yeah. And I do have other interests in other films and other genres and things I like. I haven't thought too far down the road on what the next documentary will be. Cause I'm so excited to be back into feature films. So we'll see. But I, I do like to tell people I'm not just this Rocky karate kid guy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That just happened to absorb me yeah. the last several years. So, yeah. No, but it's a really cool part of your life that I think people appreciate because you bring in more to the, to the fans of both franchises. So that's probably the biggest part of it. I think. And, and the fans have been great. I mean, the, obviously they start off their, Rocky fans or Karate Kid fans or Avildsen, Stallone, Ralph Macchio fans, whatever. Yeah. Cobra Kai. And then they kind of find me. And that's yeah. really cool. You know, it's like, hey, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. So <laughs> yeah, they've been really cool. Yeah. Nice. And how long do these documentaries usually take to make? Oh, man. Well, King of the Underdogs took like three years. Oh, wow. Um, 40 Years of Rocky was pretty quick. It just didn't come out until later and Stallone Frank that is took about two years so they take a big chunk of your life at, whereas a feature film can just maybe take say a year yeah so they're very intense wow that's crazy and I gather you've met quite a lot of the, the main cast from each individual franchise as you said you met Sly oh, absolutely absolutely wow. and retained friendships with most of them I mean it's it's uh it's been quite a journey as a matter of fact in bloodstreams uh, the bad guy of the film is Yuji Okamoto, who was oh. the bad guy in the Karate Kid 2. Yeah, chosen. You know, friends with Machio and Zapka and Cove and all those guys. So it, it's kind of cool. It's just kept this thing going. And um, I just, again, I'm just very happy and honored that I have these relationships with people I grew up watching. Yeah, of course. Nice. So we, we talked about your documentaries and that you want to make your own films. What is some else? What are your main goals and dreams in the next five years that you'd like to hit? Ooh, well, I don't know. Maybe just, I don't know. It's a good one. I don't think I've been asked that one before. Uh, it's hard to separate myself from my work. So I guess in five years from now, I hope that I'm in a place where maybe I'm doing bigger movies. Yeah. And, um, and, and maybe so successful that I can just maybe even take some time off maybe yeah, focus yeah. on family and things like that. So uh, five years from now, yeah, I hope I can have that kind of freedom. Right now, I'm just jam-packed with, with work. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that because you always want to be busy so you're making mo enough money to keep yourself going at the same time. So I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you do a lot of directing for your own movies. Would you ever like to direct for someone else who's written work 
like a Hollywood Hollywood A list movie, for example. Oh, absolutely. I think that you know, in my all my years of directing, I get scripts and ideas sent to me every day, oh, wow. and I turn down ninety nine percent of them because they're just not good, yeah, or they're just not for me. I've had two or three ideas come to me that weren't mine that I absolutely am completely drawn to and want to do them. So, but I've also been fired a few times from other projects oh, okay. because I have a vision and it conflicts with, you know, the writer or the producer or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, I would love to direct other people's stuff. I just want to tell good stories, no, I totally whether they're mine or someone else's. Yeah. And so what's your, like, I said, I said, what you want to do in the next five years? What do you want to get from your movies to the audience? Um, do you want to? You always try to better yourself from the messages that come from your products. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I grew up as this kid that was completely inspired by movies. I mean, they really had an effect on my personality. Yeah. Um, every everything they were they were you know they were the novels, if you will, of the twentieth century, and so it. It, it's a medium that really can change people's lives. So I'd like to change people's lives, give people inspiration, but also maybe sometimes I just want to make a movie that's just cool. No, and I, it yeah, just I gives you a good time. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, I want to balance that, like inspire you, make you think, make you feel. And then maybe over here, just, uh, you just have a good time with it. Yeah. So um, I hope that they get something out of it. Awesome. And Obviously, you said you grew up with certain films. Who from the directing world did you aspire from? Like, was your Steve, uh, Steven Spielberg fan? Was your James Cameron fan? Who else? Stuck out them? Well, clearly John Avildsen, as yeah. mentioned before. But uh, man, William Friedkin, David Fincher, um, Michael Mann, and then of course Scorsese, Spielberg, uh, De Palma, Hitchcock. You know the you know the list because it's yeah. everybody's list, yeah. Tarantino, et cetera. But if I could think outside that box, uh, well, even John Hughes. Yes. Um, I, it, it, I, I like a lot of classic cinema as well. So, I mean, there's just so many, so many directors that um, even Toby Hooper, um, uh, Chimino. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. I, I could keep going all day long. <laughs> I just have this this list in my head but i would say i mean what would the world be like without say a spielberg oh you know? yeah i mean it, he completely he made movies at that at that time at least you know at the height of his uh of you know with et and raiders and etc he really made cinema fun and meaningful yeah. in a time where it was just kind of dark and I'm very thankful for him for that because Raiders of the Lost Ark is the movie for me that made me become a filmmaker. Oh, well, I mean, so, it, it, yeah, it is an incredible film. I do love that. Uh, it's absolutely. Massive, yeah. Yeah. Um, was direct, because obviously you said you were from a young age inspired by movies and directors and all that sort of stuff. Was this the only path you ever wanted to go down or was there something else at some point in time that you wanted to do? I think it's what I always wanted to do. Um, I did dabble with a career in martial arts because I'm also a oh. lifelong martial artist. But I, 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 the way I looked at it was this. Martial arts will always be there for me. It's very personal. I can do it anytime. Yeah. But you can't just make movies anytime. True. You have to go and, and do that. Yeah. So I, I knew that this was all I ever wanted to do. And I'm very just thankful and fortunate I get to do it. No, I totally understand that. It's amazing to see what you've done in the directing world. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, obviously, we spoke over text about Cobra Kai. So, if the chance came up in the future, is Cobra Kai something you'd like to be part of and direct or write an episode? 100%. I, I, I mean, they're, what, four seasons in now? And I'm just yeah. like, hey, remember me? <laughs> remember John Appleton's guy? Uh Hey, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to be a part of that, but I haven't put my name in the hat and um, 
you know, maybe I should, but uh, I really enjoy the show. I mean, that's, and what's interesting is, you know, my King of the Underdogs journey, we started on in like 2014 and it came out in 2017, a month and a half after John died. Oh, well, yeah. as uh, Ralph Macchio and I are doing like a press tour for King of the Underdogs, and we, we like wrapped up uh, our, our press day. And the very next day, it was announced that Cobra Kai was happening. Oh, wow. so I texted him. I was like, why didn't you tell me? And he's like, I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. I signed something. I couldn't tell you. So like we're promoting King of the Underdogs the very next day. It's saying Cobra Kai is happening. I'm like, what? So that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. Wow. That's meant a lot. Yes, yeah, when I first heard, heard about Cobra Kai, I was so happy because I love the original Karate Kids. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to finish on one final question for you, and that is, apart from the Rocky and Karate Kid projects, what have been some of your other favorite projects you've been able to do? Um, well, Bloodstreams, the latest, yeah, has been just an absolutely amazing experience. Um, it's so nice to be back in feature films and, and I, you know, my team and I, we went into this, we wanted to make a really cool movie yeah. and it has just been like, we're in post-production now and I'm just sitting here like, this is so fun. <laughs> so I'm, I, I, it, I love documentaries. Don't get me wrong, but it's so great to be back in feature films. So bloodstreams by far is just been such a wonderful experience. Awesome. And when's that meant to come out? Do you know, or is it not yet announced? Uh, well, hopefully in 2022, uh, as we're nearing, you know, we're probably midway through post-production. So, you know, we're, we, we, we gotta, we gotta get it done and, and we're working on the deal making process right now. Yeah. So we don't have a platform or a release date yet, but we're projecting 2022. Awesome. I'll check it out once it eventually drops. So nice one. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. Well, Derek, thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show today. No, thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, and I hope you have a good day and maybe we'll catch up down the line. Maybe after blood, uh, what's it called? Blood? Bloodstreams. Blood, yeah. So maybe when Bloodstream comes out, we'll have a talk about that and see how that goes. Absolutely. I'd love to do it. Nice one. Well, thank you, Derek, again. Take care. All right. Thank you. You too. All the best.